Hello and welcome everyone and welcome to this new series which is 1000 best MCQs for data structures. Now this series is helpful for the students who are preparing for examinations like LT grade that is UPPAC LT grade examination, read plus B, KVS, PGT and TGT teachers entry. As well as if you are preparing for UGC net examination then this video will be very helpful for you. And secondly, why, the reason why I am creating this video is in, in English rather than in Hindi because in English maximum number of students can get benefited from this. And uh, if you have any suggestions regarding the video, just let me know in the comment section. Now, if you see the examinations like DSSB or if you see the examinations like UPPSC LT grade teacher, now these examinations are holding for the first time for PGT teachers. The main problem behind this is that you don't even know what is the type of questions. Uh, that they are going to ask but the levels of questions that comes in the uh, KVS PGD teachers, DSSB PGD teachers, UPPSC PGD teachers as well as uh, the UGC net examination they will be exactly similar because all these four or five examinations they are asking same level of questions as well as if you are preparing for any state entrance test which is state eligibility test set or a upset which is Andhra Pradesh state eligibility test or any uh, state eligibility test throughout the country. Now this these 1000 best data structure MCQs that is definitely going to help you in your exam preparation because I feel that I am covering every uh, topic which comes in the data structures uh, here and all these topics will be covered uh, I mean all the questions that I am discussing they will be covered topic by topic thoroughly so that you will not face any difficulty whatsoever while attempting the questions in the actual examination hall. So the first topic that we are discussing will be from abstract data type. As you can see you have created the list of the chapters here which is abstract data type. Then second chapter will be applications or stacks. Third will be arrays. Then uh, array types specifically. Then we have types of list, binary trees, heaps, uh, hash tables, graphics, uh, graphs actually I should not call it as graphics it is graphs I think there's a small spelling mistake from my side then we have searching then we have sorting and then we'll be applying questions on graph searching recursion and then in the last we'll be discussing about the dynamic programming now as you can see uh, in the first chapter which is written the abstract data type now I'm taking all these abstract data types one by one the first abstract data type is array and the array operations and secondly, I've taken most of these questions from the Sand Foundry website, which is available on Google. If you just do a Google search, then you'll find that website also. But uh, I'm trying to give a thorough explanation to every question here. I hope this video will be helpful for you. And if this video is helpful for you, please uh, like this video and subscribe to our channel on YouTube uh, because it helps us to create more and more content. And secondly, if you want to take our courses, then you can contact us on the contact numbers given below, which is 9821876102-04. And if you want to take the courses into the gate or UGC net or um, any of these uh, KVS, PGT, TGT or any of these examinations because we are creating content on daily basis, then you can always uh, call us or contact us on the numbers because uh, all the content that we create, they are not available on YouTube. We uh, There's a subscription basis that you can take the content and um, that actually helps you in your actual examination. So the first question here, which is related to array and data operations, will be like this. See, I'm taking the questions, uh, I mean every possible question that can be easy, some questions can be hard, some questions can be conceptual. I'm trying to take all the types of questions that are possible because uh, that way even if you just follow the series of data structures, which is 1000 best data structure MCQs, that will help you in terms of your interviews as well as for your competitive exam preparation. So I'm taking the best MCQs that um, anyone can ask you in your any kind of examination that can be your interview preparation or that can be your uh, competitive exam preparation or the government exam preparation. So I'm trying to take all the possible MCQs here. So the first MCQ here is saying which of the these best describes an array. Number one, a data structure that shows a hierarchical behavior. Number two, container of an object of similar type. Number three, container of object of mixed type. And number four, all of the mentioned above. Okay. If you see the first option, the data structure that shows a hierarchical struct behavior, this is not correct because for uh, hierarchical behavior, we have data structures like binary trees are there or binary search trees or AVL trees. These are the hierarchical behaviors. Second is the container of object of similar type. This is correct because in case of arrays, arrays contain, uh, in case of arrays, arrays contain all the elements of same type. 
so this is the correct one the third one is containers of object of mixed type that, that is wrong because if you have an integer array integer let us say this is an integer array now this array can only contain all the uh, elements which are of integer type it cannot carry element contain elements of different types for example it cannot carry contain characters it cannot contain floating point numbers it can only contain information related to the arrays which are of integer type i mean elements which are of integer type okay so the answer to the first question is option number b now second one is how do you initialize an array in c language correct now in case of c language as you can see first of all we write the data type data type then we give the name of the array without any space and the first name uh, the name cannot start with the integer number it should start with the character and uh, then we have these brackets where i'm specifying the size of the array sometimes even if i don't specify the size of the array then it then also it is fine and then i can specify the elements here which are separated by commas now the first option here is wrong why because here because these brackets are not used to create give the elements in c language the second is also wrong because these brackets are not used uh, to denote the arrays the third one here is right because uh, it is perfect in all the ways the fourth one is also wrong because in the fourth one you can see here because we are using the wrong brackets here as you can see here okay so fourth one is also wrong now let us look at the next question how do you instantiate an array in java okay so in case of java whenever you create an array for example if i am saying integer arr that means it means that arr um, is it can refer to an integer array i mean it can refer to a memory location here okay now to this memory location if i instantiate that means i'm creating a location where we'll be having an integer array now we are giving the reference to this integer array to this uh, to this location to this integer array okay now in the first case it is wrong because here because of these brackets uh, it is wrong the second case is wrong because here we are just declaring that this is this will be an array but we are not instantiating this not not instantiating okay the third one here is correct because it's a correct definition the fourth one is wrong now here in case of java arrays are still objects right if you see in case of c language whenever we create an array it will be integer array something like this okay and if you want to instantiate then obviously you can give the values or something like that but in case of java arrays are objects they are objects so just like you create a new object in the same way you create a new array and we have to use a new keyword here so here the answer is option number c now for the question number four which of the following is correct way to declare a multi-dimensional array in java so what is a multi-dimensional array um, in case of c language when i'm i'm saying integer a uh, with three and uh, let us say two okay now if this is in c language that means we'll be having an array which is having a total of three rows okay zero one and two and we'll be having two columns zero and one now this will be arranged in row major order row major order that means if the address of this location first location is 1000 and it is a two byte integer second location will be 1002 third location will be 1004 fourth will be 1006 fifth will be 1008 and sixth will be 1010 now these are giving the index these are giving the memory locations i'm giving the memory locations so in case of row major order so every row will be arranged in the continuous memory locations but when we say in terms of java so in java the array are uh, uh, these two dimensional arrays are created using one dimensional array only so if i say in java so we'll be having an array like this which will have be having three locations this is one dimensional array and every one of these three locations is will be having a separate uh, two dimensional one dimensional array like this so we'll be storing values here okay but uh, in case of c language all the memory locations are given continuously but in case of java the memory locations are not given continuously but rather two dimensional arrays are even implemented using one dimensional array only okay now uh, which of the following is the correct way to declare the multi-dimensional array the first one is correct okay second one is also correct third one is also correct and fourth one is saying all of the above so all these declarations are actually correct anyone in any uh, way like this you can uh, declare uh, a multi-dimensional array even if you give something like this integer brackets you can give any number of space here then brackets and arr still it is correct so between these two brackets we can have space these two brackets can be between arr also these two brackets can be after arr okay still it is fine okay so all these declarations are correct in terms of java next 
what is the output of the following piece of code as you can see here we'll be having we are having a, a public uh, class array and then we'll be ha we are having a main function and in this main function we are having an array now in this array we are having the values which are 1 2 3 4 and then we have the value 5 index locations are 0 1 2 3 4 okay and this is actually arr okay this is the reference to this object okay to this memory location now when i'm saying arr of 2 that means i'm just printing the content which is available at the second index location and the second index location content is 3 and arr of 4 that is the content of the fourth index location which is also 3 okay i think fourth index location is 5 so it is 3 and 5 so in terms of question number 5 the answer will be option number a which is 3 and 5 very easy question right the next one is uh, we are having a piece of code and we have to find the output and as you can see here uh, this is the same code but the only thing is we change the index now here you can see uh, the values will be stored like this 1 2 3 4 and 5 index location will be 0 1 2 3 and 4 now the last index location here is 4 and we are trying to access the index location 5 which does not exist now in this case we are getting an exception we always get an exception which is called as an array index out of bound exception for question number 6, the correct answer is option number C. Next. When does the array index out of bound exception occur? Obviously, it's the same same question here. Okay. Now, here, uh, this array index out of bound exception cannot ha happen the compile time. Why? Because uh, in the case, like for example, here in this previous case, when you compile this program, now in the compilation time, it's not a problem because in ARR, it is defined as we have to give an integer value. We cannot give a floating point value. If in terms of, in, instead of integer, if we give ARR of float, some floating point value, then this will be a compile time error. It will be a compile time error. Okay. So, uh, this array index out of bound exception is not a compile time error. It, it always gives in run time. So, when you allocate the memory, when the memory is allocated, then only we'll find out that this particular index location does not exist. Okay, it's not in the compile time, uh, right? So as you can see here, and it's not, and it's also wrong. Okay, so correct answer is option number B here. Now question number eight: Which of the following concepts make extensive use of arrays? Now here, uh, binary trees. Uh, uh, we have four options: binary trees, scheduling of processes, caching, and uh, special locality. Now binary trees are actually we can create binary trees uh, using linked uh, you know, uh, lists or you can say linked elements. For example, in case of this binary trees, we have the first um, location here. Then this can point to some other location. Now this can point to some other location. So binary trees are not using extensive uh, use of arrays. Next, Sh scheduling of a process also not using extensive use of array. Third is uh, caching does not do. The fourth is special locality of reference that is correct. So it is also called as special locality of reference locality of reference what does it means that in memory let us say this is uh, okay this this is the main memory let us say in main memory if the cpu is accessing acting certain locations okay let us say it is acting the uh, accessing this location now there's a very high probability that uh, it is going to next location that this uh, it will be accessing or the program uh, the next location will be it that it will be accessing we live in the close proximity close proximity of the already found location that means uh, the next location that we will be accessing or that next instruction that we will be accessing will be very close to the currently accessed location that is called a special locality of reference now because arrays here are stored in continuous memory location continuous memory locations so if we are accessing a uh, index location here or if we are accessing certain portion of the array it is a very high probability that we will be accessing uh, some other location which will be very close to the first location that can be inside the same array only okay so that is why uh, this special locality of uh, reference uh, make extensive use of the arrays concept so correct answer to this option is op uh, question is option number d next is what are the advantages of array okay first is easier to store elements of same data type now that is correct second is used to implement other data structures like stacks and queues that is also correct uh, convenient way to present matrices in 2d array that is also correct so here the answer should be option number d which is saying all of the mentioned above next what are the disadvantages of array number one is we must know beforehand how many elements will be there in the array that is also true right because uh, the size of the array is generally given a 
before the run time before the run time that is in compile time so in run time we cannot allocate uh, the size of the array okay so it is true uh, next there are chances of wastage of memory space if the elements inserted in array are lesser than the allocated size that is also correct because that will then it will be called as a sparse array sparse array so we'll be wasting a lot of space right so in this case uh, this is not beneficial for um, arrays therefore option number b is not correct i mean the option number b is correct here the better way of using is uh, for option number b uh, in a better way we can use linked list linked list will be a much better implementation for the second option so arrays are not the correct implementation third is insertion and deletion of uh, elements become tedious see insertion and deletion how it becomes tedious is that in case of array you find a certain location okay uh, finding a location is easy finding a location is easy for example if i want to find the second index location i can just refer to a of 1 so this will give you the second index location if i want to find the fourth index location it will be a of 3 okay so we can find the index location but let us say if you have an array like this which is having continuous values 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on and if you want to insert a value at the index location 3 or index location 2 uh, without wasting the space uh, without wasting other elements then you have to shift every element one location again one location after this so shifting all the elements will be a tedious task but finding the location is easy but insertion or deletion can be difficult in this particular case but anyways uh, this option number c is very subjective that means uh, they are not clarifying uh, what kind of question they are asking from here i mean uh, for what case for what particular case insertion deletion is tedious because for some cases insertion deletion is very easy but some cases it can be difficult but anyways here you can see option number a and b both are true so it's a very high probability that correct answer for this question is option number d okay i hope that you understood all these questions here we took just first 10 questions out of these 1000 questions from here and um, the first question that we discussed is from array and array operations in the next video we'll be discussing about the stack operations and the questions related to the stack operation okay uh, i hope that you understood the lecture and uh, subscribe to the channel share with your friends and uh, if you have any suggestions please write that suggestion in the comment box and that will help me to uh, create much better videos thank you so much